what I have for you. What's in there? What's in there? Wait, 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 wait. What are those? Chocolate. Chocolate chips now. I have to go get something really fast, so I need you to wait. Do not eat any chocolate chips while I'm gone, okay? Mm-hmm. Okay. Don't eat any chocolate chips, please. I'll be back. Mm. Wait until I get back, okay? Mm -hmm. Don't eat them right now. Hello and welcome back to week two of our HTC Summer Series, all about the armor of God. I'm so excited that you're back with us this week. My name is Miss Anna. Again, for those of you who might not know me, today, like I told you last week, we are going to be learning about what it means to resist temptation. Now, there are two big words that we need to know in order to understand that phrase. Resist and temptation. Now, before I tell you what both of those words mean, I'm curious to see if maybe you already know, because a lot of you are very, very, very smart. So pause the video and tell someone next to you what the word resist means. Did you take a guess? So resist means to push back up against something. So if something is coming at you, you're resisting, you're pushing against that thing. Okay, next word, temptation. Pause the video and tell someone next to you or just say it out loud to yourself. What do you think the word temptation means? Okay, so temptation is the desire to do something, especially and usually something wrong. Now being tempted to do something is a lot like being pushed in the wrong direction. So when we resist temptation, we're pushing back on the desire to do something wrong. Now, Satan is always, always on the lookout for ways to use temptation against us and to get us to do things against the Lord. Now, he's very, very smart and very, very sneaky. So he uses a whole bunch of different ways to test us and to tempt us. He loves to get us to try and do the wrong thing, but he also likes to get us to think that we're better than everybody else. And sometimes he even tempts us in the way of getting us to doubt that God even exists. Before we read our story, let's bow our heads and our hearts for prayer. Dear Father God, we thank you so much for this time together. We thank you for being all powerful. We ask that you take our temptations and our desires to do the wrong thing, Lord Jesus. You take those from us. Give us the tools, clothe us in your armor, Lord God, every day so that we can resist temptation. Be with us today as we learn about you and how to better resist the temptations that come our way. We love you so much, Lord Jesus. Amen. Now let's take a look at some temptations that you might deal with on a daily basis. It's okay to cheat on that test. No one's looking. Just take that last cookie. Hmm. Play video games instead of reading your Bible. Now, there is good news. I always have good news for you. We can resist temptation. We're able to, but we're not able to do it by ourselves. We need the Lord. We need him to guide us and we need to trust him and have faith in him in order to resist temptation. And that's a big part of what the armor of God is for. Those pieces of the armor are to clothe us and to better prepare us for resisting temptation and for being part of the army of God, being part of God's kingdom. And the most amazing thing of all is that Jesus didn't just tell us, resist temptation, good luck. He gave us an example. 
He gave us the best example. He gave us himself. Did you know that even Jesus was tempted? Can you think of a time in the Bible during Christ's life when he was tempted to do something? That's right. Jesus was tempted to turn his back on his own father. Let's see what happens. Now let's take a look at our scripture reading for today. We're going to read about Jesus being tempted by Satan in the wilderness. We're going to be reading from Matthew 4, 1 through 11, but I'm going to be reading from the Jesus Storybook Bible. So if you have this Bible, go ahead and read along with me. Let's go. After Jesus was baptized, he went straight out into the desert. That might seem like an odd place to go because as you know, deserts are very hot and there isn't any food or water or places to stay. But Jesus needed to get away by himself and be somewhere quiet and lonely. He needed to be with his heavenly father to get ready for his new life. In the desert, Jesus thought about the secret rescue plan he had made with God. Before the foundation of the world, they both knew what would have to happen. To rescue God's children, Jesus would have to die. There was no other way. It was the reason he had come. Now that old enemy, the one who had spoken through the snake to Adam and Eve back in the garden, remember him? He didn't want Jesus to rescue God's people, so he lied to Jesus. Are you really God's own son? He whispered, poor you. God must not love you. You don't need to die. Do it my way. Yes and no, Jesus said to the liar. I will do what God says. And from that moment on, nothing would ever be the same. Jesus wasn't like Adam. Jesus was a new kind of man. He would not believe the terrible lie that the enemy spoke. Jesus knew God loved him and he would trust God no matter what. It was just as God had promised to Adam and Eve all those years before. Jesus had come to do battle against the snake's work. He would get rid of the sin and the darkness and the tears, and he would suffer, but he would win. The Bible tells us in James chapter 4, verse 7, resist the devil and he will flee from you. That's how simple it is. Christ showed us that he was able to resist temptation, but he knows that we need some extra help. So every time we have a temptation in front of us, whatever it is, to think that we're better than somebody else or to do the wrong thing or to doubt the Lord and think, hmm, maybe God doesn't really exist or to doubt ourselves, you're not good enough. You're not the best. All of those things are temptations. And the more and more we practice stopping when we come in contact with a temptation and saying, nope, this is not from you, God. And praying to him and spending time with him and asking him to take those temptations away, the more we practice, the better we're gonna get. It's just like putting on an armor. The more you put on a heavy, big piece of armor, the more used to it you're going to get. So God has shown us through his example and through his word that we are able to resist temptation with his help. Now I want to show you how those same temptations might look for someone who was prepared and practiced in saying nope to temptations before them. It might look a little bit different. It's okay to cheat on that test. No one's looking. Just take that last. Go ahead, just play that video game instead of reading your Bible. Mm. Like I said before, Satan tries his very, very hardest to grab hold of us. Because the more he can pull us away from God, the less close we can be to our Father in Heaven. But when we clothe ourselves with that beautiful, amazing armor, nothing can touch us. Not even Satan himself. Let's pray the Lord and ask him to help us with these temptations. Dear God, 
Thank you for reminding us that we are never alone. Thank you for telling us that when we have temptations in front of us, we have you to take care of them for us. Help us to practice stopping before acting and help us to remember that you are always there to guide us. We love you, Jesus. Amen. I hope you all have a wonderful, amazing week. I miss you guys so, so much. And I'll see you next week. Bye. Did you wait for me? Did you eat any or did you wait? Um, maybe. Did you wait for me or did you eat any? Eat any. <laughs> you waited for me, huh? Good job. You can have some. Mmm. Do you love it? Eli, don't open that. Don't.